if we set up a redox reaction in an electrochemical cell, meaning we separate the oxidation from the reduction and connect it through a salt bridge, and we can actually measure a current and determine a cell potential. We can calculate that cell potential based on electrode potential that are tabulated, and that's what we've been doing up until now. And so we also know that if that value of the cell is positive, that the reaction occurs spontaneously or in the direction, in the forward direction, all right, the way it's set up. If it's negative, it occurs in the reverse reaction. And we also know that spontaneous reaction have a negative delta G or Gibbs free energy. And so in the previous chapter on entropy and uh, Gibbs free energy, we uh, calculated delta G, and we know that if that's negative, it's spontaneous. And so it's no surprise that there's a mathematical relationship between delta G and E naught, or the electro potential of the electrochemical cell. And so, so here's this equation where delta G equals yada yada, right? And so the negative value is just to to uh, change the quantity into a negative value because if e the cell is positive, it's spontaneous, but delta G is negative. So that's all that's about. This is the, the, the potential that we can calculate. N is the number of moles and F is uh, Faraday's constant and Faraday's constant is simply the current of one mole of electrons, right? So we measure we measure current in coulombs, and of course, the the higher, the more electrons we have, the higher uh, the ch the current or the coulombs is. And if we have exactly one mole of electrons, we have ninety six thousand four hundred eighty five, and and that's why we have Faraday's number times the number of electrons, which gives us the current for one uh, mole or for that particular number of moles in the cell, and then you multiply by the electron potential. And so then there's another relationship because we also know from the thermochemistry chapter that delta G and K are uh, related. And so you can calculate K and, 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 and come up with a, an equation that then relates the electropotential and K. And that's, that's what this is here. And you can derive these. Or you can. So what that means is if you have a cell and the concentration is one molar, on e at each side, so it makes sense that if you increase the concentration on the product side or the or the reactant side, that it would shift somehow, and that there is a an equilibrium constant that exists for uh, redox reactions as well. And so let's let's take a, an example. Let's take a look at an example here. Here we have a redox reaction: iodine react, uh, reacting with bromide. So uh, we're going to use the tabulated values, and I, I snipped and zoomed and highlighted the oxidation and reduction. Or of course, they're both listed as reductions, and, and so we want delta G. So we have to use uh, the equation we just looked at. But before we can do that, we have to calculate the electron potential. How do we do that? Well, we're experts. We first determine what's the oxidation, what's the reduction here. So the reduction is iodine turning into iodide. So we have uh, iodide is being reduced. There are two electrons, one per iodine turning into iodide, or two of them. If I find that's down here, the electron potential is 0 0.54. This is the reduction, or the cathode. And the second reaction is the oxidation. So we have bromide. Each bromine is uh, ejecting an electron to form bromine. So we have bromide, two of them going to Br2, and that's uh, and two electrons. So that's your oxidation. And so the electron potential there is 1.09 volts. That's the anode. And so we can calculate electron potential by taking the value of the anode, 0 0.54 minus the cathode, 1.09, which is equal to negative 0 0.35. Sorry, that, that's incorrect. Uh, it's negative 0 0.55 volts. So we know that's a negative number. So it's a non-spontaneous reaction. 
we we know that it would always flow from the more or the least positive the more negative to the positive so the natural flow would be the opposite but we can of course make that happen by applying a a current so we definitely know that we have a positive number for delta g this should not be a spontaneous reaction so let's do that so delta g is going to be equal to uh, negative and n in this case is 2 because we have two electrons here and that's important so we have 2 times Faraday's number which is 96,480 coulombs per mole per electron so this is this is an electron and then we calculate we multiply by the electron potential which is uh, negative 0 0.55 and if you remember a volt is equal to a joule per coulomb those are interexchangeable so now we put a joule per coulomb here the coulomb cancels and uh, and the number of moles cancels and so we get an electron potential or we get an energy of okay, it's gonna get a little ugly here 1.1 times 10 to the fifth joules, that's the answer. Let's look at a clean uh, slide here. So, so here's, here's, here's that calculation. We have two moles of electrons, so I should have written it. The moles cancels, the electron cancels, the coulomb cancels here, they forgot to cancel the electron here. And we end up with a, a rather large number, and it is positive, so therefore it is, um, it is non-spontaneous. So, uh, just real quick, I rushed through a few slides. Uh, this is, uh, you know, for you to look at. Maybe it can guide you what kind of a game plan you should have. But it's it's pretty simple. If you know what reaction or what equation to use, you should know how to calculate the electron potential. Everything else is just downhill. Uh, let's now use a different reaction and calculate the. Uh, the equilibrium constant, right? So refer to the tabulated electrode potentials. Again, we, we know this already to calculate K. Now I've done this already uh, for you because we've done so many and I don't see the point in doing it. The one thing you that's nice here is we have two electrons already, so we don't have to worry about that. And then if we just solve for K, right? So, so the log of k is going to be equal to the negative 0 0.34 volts times n which is 2 moles and divided by that 0 0.0592 volts that's going to give me a number it's negative 11.48 and so now I have to take the inverse log or 10 to the negative 11.48 is going to be equal to K, which in this case is equal to 3.3 .3 times 10 to the minus 12. Okay, so now we know how to calculate delta G and, uh, and K. This is just, again, everything worked out nice and neat. You can practice that. Uh, in fact, this is really killing three flies with one swat because you are calculating E, cell potential, K, and delta G. You can do it for both of those. I think there will be plenty of practice if you can do all that. And let's take a look at what happens when the concentrations of the reactants and products are something other than one molar, right? For a standard potential, which is what all of those electrochemical cell or electrode potential half reactions are about is when the concentrations are with one molar. We can uh, look at the tabulated values for the oxidation of zinc and reduction of copper and the electrocell potential would be equal to 1.10 as, as is shown here for the standard conditions and that's if we have uh, a one molar concentration. So if we set up an equilibrium constant, and we haven't done that, but it's always going to be one, right? Because the 
concentrations of the products, which are zinc ions, and the concentrations of copper ions are both one, and one over one equals one. So here K is equal to one, and if it's, if the concentrations are different, we're either gonna shift to the right or the left, right? So remember that zinc solid and copper solid are not part of the equilibrium expression. We have excess, right? We have an excess of copper and an excess of zinc metal here. Now, if the concentrations we can calculate Q, right, for a different scenario. So here we have the our, our uh, reactant is going to have a larger concentration, so that's going to be two molar, and the con uh, the reactant is 0 0.010 m. Then we get a quotient that is 0 0.05, which means it's going to shift to the right, right, and it also means that the uh, the electrical potential is larger than the electrical potential of the standard cell which also means it's going to shift to the right or proceed towards the uh, uh, the forward reaction here which is the zinc is oxidizing and copper is reducing and if we had something lower than we would have the reverse reaction we would then have copper oxidizing and zinc reducing, right? So that makes sense so that we get back to some sort of equilibrium. So you can look at the summary slide on your own and some of the rationale about it. Uh, we're gonna just look at the equation. It's called the Nernst equation. It's really not a big deal because we already are familiar with this equation from chapter 18, thermochemistry, entropy, and Gibbs free energy. And uh, we already know that uh, K, uh, we were just replacing K with Q, right? We haven't, uh, and then so the, the cell potential of the situation where anything is, uh, not where it's not at equilibrium, we can calculate that potential by using what we've used already, but instead of uh, using K, we're going to use Q, and so it can get a little tricky. You have to set up the reaction properly. So let's take a look at this example here. It's uh, it's a little bit more involved. And so step number one is we need to make sure it's balanced, and uh, we have the right number of electrons here. So so we have three and two. That means we have to multiply this by three, and this by two. And when we bring it all down, we're gonna have three copper and two MnO4 minus and eight hydronium ions. That's all on the reactant side. On the product side, we now have three copper ions and I'm gonna leave the electrons out because they're gonna cancel. And we also have two, all right? Manganese four, that's a solid, so that's, and we have four, let's see, two times two is four water molecules. So again, for the equilibrium expression, or Q in this case, it's products over reactants. We're going to have copper to the third power divided by, and so here again, we have a solid, solid liquid. So on the product side, all we have is copper. On the reactant side, we have hydronium to the eighth power, and then permanganate, oops, it's MnO4 squared, so this is eight. And, and so, hint, hint, right, we are only given concentrations of uh, copper and manganate, so if you accidentally forget that solids and liquids drop out, uh, if you don't have something, you can't plug it in. So so just just to get, get Q, of course, we're gonna plug it into the, the entire equation here, but so copper is going to be 0 0.010 cubed times the concentration of 
oh that's easy to the eighth power times the concentration of permanganate squared okay that's gonna give me Q and I'll go I'll go straight to the solution here uh, that's I, all, all I did is I, I plugged in the numbers on the other side for Q I didn't plug in the other two but of course n is going to be equal to six because we have six electrons total they're not shown here but if I multiply three times two I get six electrons on this side and six electrons here which of course drop out and so that's why we have the number six and so then we do get a cell potential of 1.41 which is larger than the standard cell potential which is 1.34 so it is going to shift to the right to the product side okay so this is it everything you need to know if you're interested in batteries you can just kind of look at those slides i'm not going to cover it but good luck on the final